Assalamualaikum and this is another lecture for Structural Geology Chapter 4 and this one is the last part is all about geological maps and it in, its interpretations so basically you already know about map in your lab session we have map 1, map 2 and map 3 and all of that map is representing geological map and you have already understand some features that already given in the lab session and all the those features is very important to represent what is the uh, map in terms of the cross section and so on so it is very much different from the map that you can observe using the real map that you can buy in the bookstore or the map that you can actually retrieve using your Google Map and whatever apps uh, that relate to maps. So this is a special map to features all the geological fe uh, geological features. So the rock units or geologic strata are shown by colors or symbols. So this is already you have already know uh, all of this. You have symbol for different types of rock. And then you have color to represent all of this, all of this uh, strata. And of course, you already uh, understand about bedding planes and structural features such as fault, folds, and lineation. And of course, you need to know the slope of the uh, rock by understand what is dry and deep. We have another one which is stratigraphy contour lines may be used to illustrate the surface of selected stratum, illustrating the subsurface topographic trends or of strata. Okay, so how you interpret geological mapping? Okay, uh, this is uh, what we need to know about geological map. It is the features on the ground. Okay, it is the features on the ground. They have been observed from above, uh, meaning that if you can imagine you are now using drones or you are on helicopter, so when you are very much in a higher place, you are seeing the whole world is actually in flat land. But actually, in real case, there's a big difference in terms of elevation. There are some portion is high, some portion is low ground. So all of this is captured in geological map. And it is important to read the symbol that has been used on map uh, because a different symbol give the different interpretation of the types of rock. And of course, you uh, by now, you already know that the most important things in geological map is you have the scale and you have that uh, north north direction and then below the north direction there is a scale so you need to use the scale to pictures uh, in terms of the cross section so these are the important features that you need to know in geological map so next is the idea of contour. You know that you have all the lines with different numbers. Uh, you have about 100, 200, 300, 400, up to 900 or might more. All of these are actually to represent the elevation. The highest number is the highest uh, elevation and the lowest number is the lowest part for that particular area. Of course, you cannot see these lines on the actual scenario, meaning that if you are going to the mountain area, you cannot see all of these lines. All, all of these lines only imaginary, but because of uh, that, we can interpret the cross section of the map. And between one contour to another contour, you have that spacing, that spacing meaning uh, one contour to another contour, it has a uh, different thickness. Some sometimes your rock is in that region of contour, so you know the thickness 
immediately but sometimes it just intercept all of that contour so you need to interpret what is the thickness of the uh, rock so what you need to know about this contour uh, the highest point or the highest bed of your mountain area is the youngest and the lowest bed in the sequence meaning that that will be the oldest outcrops in the deepest valley okay this is more interesting because you can see the map in color and of course this one is using software or geology modeling so that you can see what is the higher highest ground and what is the lowest bed so the red represent the highest ground and the purple here is the ground valley and this is what you have done in map 1, map 2 and map 3. This is the sequence that you need to do. First is you need to do the cross for cross section or to do the section drawing. If you have point A and point B, you can uh, give uh, you can make the profile from A to B. And of course this profile can be anywhere on your map. So now you have the basic idea how to do the profile. So whenever you get the geologic map, you can imagine what is the cross-section is all about for the actual case scenario. So this is uh, another way for you guys to understand how uh, contour line represents the cross-section and how you can portray what is the highest ground and what is the lowest ground. But this one is very much simple for all of you to read. And but of course, because you have already done this in map 1 and map 2, so you really understand what is the cross-section is all about. And of course, uh, you need to know the geological mapping terminology. Okay, uh, Eventually, when you do map 1 to map 3, you already heard about or you already read about the exposure and outcrops. So when you see this word, this this meaning means that you can see the whole mountain in front of you. So the outcrop is something that already uh, already formed inside the earth. And at one point, uh, because of the earth movement, this uh, earth, uh, this, this uh, formation of rock then exposed to the environment. So when exposed to the environment, uh, what you see is the outcrops. Next, of course, you uh, you can see the thickness of strata. You already done this in map 1. And of course, the other features, you can see the contour lines. You can see the stratigraphy columns. And then you can see the structural contours. So all of this uh, is uh, been given to the picture here. You can see uh, where is the features of geological maps. And of course, uh, during you, you are doing the map 1 up to map 3, you also know the boundary lines, right? From one rock to another rock, there, is, there are a boundary lines. So this is actually differentiate one layer to another layer. So next is we need to introduce all of you the geological map of Malaysia. So maybe this is the first time you see uh, Malaysia. This is Peninsula Malaysia. You know already what is the shape of our Peninsula Malaysia. If you are you already learn about geography, but this time is the map. But this is a geological map. So uh, the difference, uh, the differences between geography map and geological map in geological map you have all the information about the formation of the rock okay uh, in Malaysia geological map you can see here different color meaning different uh, era or different times of the formation you have that quaternary uh, tertiary Jurassic Cretaceous Triassic Permian and so on all of this uh, terminology about quaternary, tertiary, Jurassic Cretaceous is all the terminology you have learned in chapter 1 when we learn about the geologic time. 
So what is the important for geological map in Malaysia? Because you can locate where is the sedimentary rock. You can locate where are the metamorphic rocks. And of course, sometimes you might locate the igneous rock. What is the important for us, the engineer? Because we can use all of this information for the use of engineering. For example, you need uh, this kind of rock to be used in your concrete mixture. In concrete, you must add some rock inside your concrete mix, right? So this rock is actually from the formation of rock. If you can see the abundance of this material, you can locate uh, this area and you can use it in your uh, concrete mix design. And of course, uh, in terms of limestone, limestone is one uh, limestone is the most important ingredient for all of you to make cement. So if we know that at that particular area, a lot of limestone, so this is very abundant resources that you can use to make a cement, to make cement. So, um, so in terms of uh, Malaysia, how to describe Malaysia geological maps, Malaysia is actually located on the Sunda shelf and is tectonically inactive. Okay, to compare to Indonesia and our neighbor country like Philippines, they are actually located in active uh, tectonic plate activities. And when we backdated what is the oldest rock in the country, it's about 540 million years ago and uh, mostly sedimentary. The most common form of rock in Malaysia is limestone and it was formed during the Paleozoic era. In limestone laid down in East Malaysia during the tertiary period has since eroded and such erosion form basin of sedimentary rock rich in oil and natural gas. The mountain ranges in Malaysia were formed through tectonic plate process beginning in the Mesozoic era. So once upon a time, Malaysia is actually very active uh, plate activities. But right now, the activities is actually stopped. Okay, uh, what is the highest mountain? You already know this is Mount Kinabalu that is in Sabah, in the Crocker Range. And this range uh, includes Mount Kinabalu, the highest mountain in the country. In Penel in Peninsula Malaysia, the famous uh, mountain range is the Titiwangsa Mountain. And this uh, Titiwangsa Mountains is divided into east and west coast of Malaysia. So uh, we are learning in UITM Jengke. We are actually in the east coast. Okay, Some of you, your village is actually at the west coast area. So when you are making the journey, you know that you have to pass through the Titiwangsa Mountains. So that is uh, basically how our our country divided into two because of this uh, mountain area. Okay, numerous caves run through the peninsula and the east due to the crust landscape caused by water eroding limestone. Okay, you know that limestone is in Malay we call it kapo and and limestone is actually very easy to erode. So when there is this water, so your limestone can easily erode. So we have a lot of caves in Malaysia. If you go to Gua Senyum, Gunung Senyum and so on, we have a lot of caves there. And you go to the Perak uh, para area, you have that Gua Tempurung. And of course in Sarawak, we do have Guernia and so on. So all of this is actually the act of erosion. So this is the beautiful Malaysia uh, colored in terms of geological map. And okay, we must appreci appreciate this because uh, this means that we have abundant of minerals and materials that we can use in construction industry. So this is the picture for Smart Tunnel. Uh, okay, we don't have that uh, video for Smart Tunnel, but you can always uh, watch the video in YouTube and you can get the idea, uh, the, Im the importance of knowing about rocks and how of, uh, this, uh, this rock affected uh, civil engineering works. So for that, I end the lecture.